Growing up, I'm sure everybody here heard the nursery story about the three little pigs. And we're going to start off with that before I read my text. The three little pigs, right? The, they had a house built with straw, the first one. Okay, he built his house with straw. And there was a wolf, a big bad wolf walking by. And he wanted to get the pig. And the pig ran into his house that he built with straw. And what happened? Tell me, what happened? He huffed and he puffed and he blew the house down because it was a weak house built with straw. And the other pig saw that. And he said, well, I'm not going to build mine with straw. I'm going to find some what? Some sticks. And he built his house with sticks and the wolf came by and the wolf saw him. And what happened? He huffed and he puffed and he blew the house down. Now the third pig, he ain't stupid. He's a smart pig. He went and found some bricks, solid bricks. And he built his house. And the same wolf that was passing by the two previous houses saw it. And what did he try to do? He tried to huff and puff and blow the house down. And it didn't happen. He, he tried till he ran out of breath. Why? Because the house was built on a solid foundation. The house was not built with straw. The house was not built with sticks. If you have your Bible, please turn with me to Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 to 29. Let me know when you get there. I can read it to you. Matthew chapter 7, 24 to 29. The wise and the foolish builders. This is a parable Jesus is talking about. Let us read. Therefore, everyone who hears the words of mine and puts them into practice is like a what? A wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down. The streams rose, the winds blew, and beat against the house. Yet, it did not fall, because it had its foundation on what? But then he goes again. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. That same rain, same building houses, different foundation. The rain came down. The streams rose, the winds blew, and beat against the house, and it fell with a great crash. It didn't slowly fall down. It fell with a great crash. Now, when Jesus had finished saying these things to the crowds, they were amazed at his teachings, because he thought as one who had authority and not as their teachers of the law. My topic to you this morning is, if you don't build strong, you won't last long. If you don't build strong, you're not going to last long. This is a parable Jesus is preaching on the Sermon on the Mount. He's talked a lot for a few days with them, and this one, he ends it by telling them this one. This was one of the last things he said to them. We want to take this today. It's a short parable, but there's a lot of applications. There's, there's a lot of things we can get from it, but let's focus on the two things, the foolish and the smart. Amen. We have a decision to make in our spiritual life how we want to build, foolishly or solid. You want to build on sand or you want to build on the rock? You want to withstand storms or you want to fall with a great crash? That is our options. You have two options. And it's up to you to pick. He was talking about two men who took two different directions. What directions are we going to take this morning? When you heard the text, we have to think from now, how are we going to do this? How are we going to build our spiritual life? Are we going to build it on the rock or are we going to build it on the sand? He made sure, God made it sure his audience understood the meaning by He explained it. After all of the teachings on the Sermon on the Mount, it was important that the people understood that simply listening to his words was not going to be good enough. 
hearing what God is saying is not good enough. My old boss used to always say to the new guys, he, he would let them, you know, slip up once, and, and then if they do it again, he would be like, hey, come here. If you didn't know, I understand. If you didn't know, it's a knowing problem. But when I tell you, and you know, and you do it again, that's no longer a knowing problem. That is a doing problem. And that is the problem a lot of Christians have today. They know, but they don't do. I heard what you said, Lord. I heard how you said to build a house. I heard what a solid foundation is. I know what it takes to be strong. But I just heard it and I applied no spiritual, physical application to my life to succeed to get to that rock. Hearing and doing. A lot of people today, we hear, but we don't do. In Luke's account of this parable, Jesus begins asking this question. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and you know what I said, but you don't do? And I fell in that boat before. I'm not pointing fingers. I'm just saying we can learn from this how to build our spiritual life on the rock, which is Jesus Christ. Amen. There are things that are going to happen into your life. There are storms that are going to come into your life. If you don't have a solid foundation, it is going to come crashing down. And it's upon us to build a foundation. God gave us the directions. He's not going to do it for you. Building on a solid foundation. What is that? It is coming to church more than Easter and Christmas. Building on a solid foundation is having a prayer life every day. Not just on a Wednesday for 45 minutes on the phone. Building a solid prayer life is being faithful with your tithes and your giving. Building a solid foundation is being a steady member at church. It's being there for somebody. Building a solid foundation is when you know they hurt you, but you can still forgive them. That is solid foundation. When you know you've been right, but now it's time for you to sit back and take wrong because it's easiest for the cooling of the situation. That is building strong. You don't have to defend yourself. Building a solid foundation. Is when you know a brother hurt you and you can forgive them and hug them genuinely. When you did nothing wrong and they went and talked about you. And now you see him Sunday or you see him in a grocery store and you just completely forget about that. And go about your own business and say, hey brother, how are you? I miss you at church. That's building a strong foundation when you do it genuinely. When you can pray for someone that did you wrong. Now they're going through it. You're not laughing at them. You feel sorry. And you want them to get out of their mess as quick as possible because you were once there and you know how bad it feels. That's growing on a solid foundation. The church needs more people like that. And we can be a person like that because you only have two choices, solid or sand. It's not hard to choose from when you see the benefits of solid living. and a solid lifestyle, you get solid results. If your bank account has $100,000 in it, you can take something out of it because it's solid. If your bank account has 10 cents in it, what are you going to get? Build solid foundation. We all built a house. We all know what if, how, how, how the, the process. We all live in Florida, Hurricane City. You see some houses stand strong, and then you see some houses when a wind comes, a Category 3 comes. What happens? Because they built it by the beach, sandy foundation. (laughs) Building your spiritual life depends on you and how you do it. How you decide what your solid foundation is. And as Christians, the Bible tells us what it is. A solid foundation is the word of God. And once you know the word of God, and you know the power behind it, God, and you read God's word, you get his instructions and how to handle any situation because you were built strong. You know how to forgive. You know how to give. You know how to teach. You know how to reach out to people. You know how to pray. 
foundation. Those are basic foundations Christians should have. Because if we don't have the basics, we're not going to get very far. I don't know how you are building your life today, but we can always start over. You can build. Build upon the rock. Build upon the rock of Jesus. Jesus is our rock. Jesus is the rock. You know that. Now, the rain came. Okay? Things are going to happen. The rain came from above. The water started to rise from below. The wind came from all around. Sometimes when things like that happen to you, it's your foundation is what's going to hold you. Nothing else is going to hold you because you're going to get pressure from life as a Christian. You're going to get it from each side. You're going to get beaten from the top side and bottom. But how you handle it and how you stand those blows life throws at you, it's all based on your foundation. And a solid foundation in God will keep you standing in any situation. A solid foundation in your marriage will keep you standing in any situation. A solid foundation in your family. Getting together. Praying together. Loving one another. Forgiving each other. Because family becomes the most. Because you're closest to each other. That's why it hurts when words are said. Build that relationship on the rock. Be smart of where you choose to build your life. Now we go to the other fella. Same opportunity. Okay? Same opportunity, but a different approach. Same opportunity, a different approach. You can give someone a Bible and the other person a Bible. And who reads the Bible gets stronger. Who opens up that Bible is the one that's going to get stronger. Who applies that Bible to themselves is the one who's going to get something out of it. He is going to grow spiritual muscles as more as he studies and as more as he exercises those truths that the word says. But then there are some of us have the same Bible and it has dust on it. The same Bible, all the pages are brand new. The same Bible, they're sticking together because it's never been opened. You ever seen a book that's been sat there so long and you try to open it and it opens five pages at a time? Because it's all stuck together and it's because it's never been used. Amen. And then there's this one Bible, like Pastor Amar's Bible. You ever seen that man's Bible? That Bible, it's so, all pastors do is say, hey, what is Luke, chapter Luke, turn, book Luke, and that Bible just goes to Luke. So it used to being used. <laughs> building on sand. Let's see, well, what are some things we can do that's building on sand? Not coming to church. You come when there's a funeral or a wedding. Building on sand. You come to church when something bad happens, then you want the ministers to preach, to pray for you. You haven't attended church in five years, and one bad thing happened. Or what is Pastor Amar's cell phone number? One bad thing happened. They call in the church. I need help. You never built a relationship with the church. You never built a fellowship with God. Come in Sunday. You're not coming to church with people. Yes, it's nice to see friendly faces and to hug. And I wish you're weak. But you're coming to church to get spiritually fed that when daily troubles come, you have a way to withstand that wind. You come to the Bible study. You fast. Okay? You dedicate some time away from the TV. To pray while you're driving to work. Do something to edify your life, to build upon your life, that when things happen to you, you can withstand it. Because when things happen to you, it doesn't really affect somebody else. You is the one that is your life one-on-one. -on -one. Why wait till something's happened to you? Then you got to go ask somebody else to pray for you. When you should know how to pray for yourself. You get a cold and you say, Pastor, I've tried DayQuil. I've tried NyQuil. It's colder. Why can't you put your hands on yourself? Why can't you heal yourself? Because it's the same power that God, you have the authority to build on. I mean, building on sand. When you're in conversations about church members, when you have no need to be in that conversation. You don't hear, you heard one side of the story, but you're ready to support. You're ready to agree. 
building on sand. Not being able to forgive a minute situation because somebody didn't forget to shake your hand. Building on, what, what? You came to church and a guest is sitting in a seat you sat on for the past two months. Now you forget what song they, wish they played. You forget to put your tides. You are just in a bitter mood. What type of foundation is that? I say coming to church is fine, yes. But applying what you hear. They, both of them heard the word of God. Both of them got the instructions, one applied. Building on sand. When God bless you with that job you always ask for. Lord, if you give me this, I will do that. Lord, if you give me that raise, that tide bucket's going to get more because you blessed me. And you haven't done it. Building on sand. Lord, if you give me a child that I always wanted. And Lord heard your prayer. And the last time that child was in church is when it got dedicated. What type of foundation for that child are you building? I'm not here to beat anybody up. I think I gave enough illustrations of what the difference is between the rock and the sand. So let's just focus on who you serve and where you are going to build your spiritual life. Because when storms come in your life, the devil is going to come at you some point from all areas. There are other times he will hit your family. There are other times he will hit your job. There are times he will hit you physically. There are times he's going to hit you mentally. It's going to come at you all the time. But the foundation on Jesus Christ, the foundation on God's promises, the foundation on knowing that your God is bigger than any situation. Your God created the wind. Your God created the waters. So it's he that you serve because that is the benefit of building a life on Jesus Christ, which is the solid rock you stand on today. Amen? All right. I want to say a special prayer before I close this, because it's a short sermon. I've said what I had to said, say, and I feel God said that's enough. That's all. I want you to just stand with me as we close with this prayer. And if you acknowledge where you're at in your building, you know if you are building on solid ground, then, then keep building. But if you know that what you were doing was going to be on sand, now you know. How to change that. Remember, if you didn't know, it's a knowing problem. But when you do know and you choose to do the others, it becomes a doing problem. And then that's on you. Father, I lift up Deeper Life this morning. Every ear that heard your message, oh God, I pray that they clearly understand the two choices that they have. Because there's a day going to be coming that God's going to say either yes or no, enter or don't. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your instructions, oh God. I pray that it goes to our people today and they apply it to their lives and that they will be to hold on to the promise that their life is built on Christ, the solid rock. Church, take that word, pray, examine your life today and realize where you need to firm that foundation up at. Where, read and know where you need to make solid in your life. Remember the word of God. Remember the two decisions the men make. One could withstand the storm and the one came crashing down. Bless your people, oh Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.